Okay, so we have made it to question number 11. So this is one that is going to be talking about um, an average. So we're going to learn how we can make averages based off this question. So question number 11 says, a history class is made up of 12 10th graders and 9 11th graders. The 10th graders average 77 on the midterm exam and the 11th graders average 91 on the midterm exam. What was the average grade on the midterm exam for the entire class? Okay, so I just have to take notes because that's a lot of information. And I know they're trying to make me to make a mistake by saying 12 10th graders. So I'm just going to write this. There's 10th graders and there's 11th graders. There are 12 10th graders. So I'm going to write 12. And then there's 9 11th graders. And then the 10th graders got 77, so 77% was their average. And the 11th graders got 91%. Okay, so now that I have my information organized a little bit more, I can go ahead and use that information in order to get averages. Okay, so the entire class, so we're trying to make a fraction. The bottom should have a total, so the total number of students and then the top is going to be the averages of the different amount of students' grades. So we are going to already, oh, sorry, I can't speak. First, we're just going to add the number of students there are. So if you need to put in a calculator, you can go ahead and do that. But you're just going to do 12 plus 9, and that is equal to 21. So 21 is going to be on the bottom. So now 21, or the total on the bottom, is going to be an indicator of how many different grades you need to represent on the top. If you put 21 on the bottom, then 21 different grades need to be represented on the top. So some people are just gonna do 77 plus 91, but that is not correct because if you only have two scores on the top, you've only represented a total of two students but we need to represent a total of 21 different scores because there's 21 different students. So we have to multiply 77 times the number of students that got 77. So 12 students got an average of 77. So we're gonna do 12 times 77. And then nine students got an average of 91. So we're gonna multiply 91 times nine. And now when we add these all together, 21 different scores will be represented, 12 77s and 9 91%. So I'm going to bring this down here just so we can see it better. 12 times 77 and 91 times 9. And it's all going to be over 21. So go ahead and grab your calculator because on your test, you will be able to use this and do 77 times 12. And that equals 924. Then do 91 times 9. That is equal to 819 over 21. Now go ahead and add 924 and 819, and you should get 1043 over 21. And now just remember, anytime you see a fraction, a fraction represents a division problem. You take the top number and you divide it by the bottom number. So you do 1043 divided by 21 to get the average. So I'm gonna divide that number by 21 and I get 83. And so our answer is going to be B. Okay, so just as a reminder with this question, you're not just going to have two scores on the top if you have 21 different students on the bottom. Whatever number you have on the bottom needs to be represented on the top. So if they didn't tell us exactly how many students were in the class and we just know it was two different grades, then you can say two on the bottom. And then you could do 77 and 91 on the top. But because they said there's 21 students, then we have to represent 21 different scores on the top. So however many students would have scored an average of 77, how many students scored an average of 91, add those two together, divide, and you're able to get your average. If you would like more questions that are similar, worded similarly, and solved similarly, I've created a TSI practice test it has a lot of different examples like this one, but also like the other ones on the practice 
tests that you can be able to practice the same skills over and over again. Also, I am in the process of creating my first TSI course. So um, I'm going to leave that in the description box when it is ready. So I would encourage you to go to the description box, check out my practice tests, and also check to see if my TSI course is ready. If it's ready, it'll be there. If it's not ready quite yet, then come back in maybe a week or so to see if it's been ready. But I am working hard at it and I'm really proud of it. So eventually in the description box, this video will have my very first TSI course. So happy studying you guys and I will see you in the next one.